Hey there, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's lesson. This is Unit 1, Lesson 4 uh, from Code.org over binary numbers. So for the warm-up today, uh, think, about the, think about the last time that we met. Uh, in our previous class, you created your own number system using circles and squares. Uh, remember, with just the circle and square uh, as your symbols, how many different combinations could you come up with in a three-digit combination? How many different ones could you come up with in a uh, four-digit combination. So kind of building on that, think back. Uh, I want you to reflect on this question. You don't have to you don't have to write this down in your journal, but I do want you to pause the video here and kind of uh, think about this in your head. Uh, so today's uh, warm-up question, what can we communicate using only two symbols, like circle, square? Is there a limit? Is there a limit to how much you can actually communicate if you only have uh, two signals? Uh, and if so, where do you think that limit is? So uh, go ahead and pause the video here, take a few moments, and try and come up with some answers to that question, and we'll be here when you come back. Okay, so, um, well, depending on what you came up with, you probably you probably answered some some uh, something along the lines of, you can answer yes no questions right using only two symbols or true false questions or if we're talking about switches like is the is the light switch on or off um, uh, if you think about it a little harder though you 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 might realize that you can add together combinations of yes no answers by using multiple symbols in a row so like two yeses can be one thing versus a yes no right or two no's are different from a no yes those sorts of things. So it feels like there there is a a limit. It kind of instinctually feels like there's a limit to how much you can communicate with just two symbols. But if you get really creative and you think you think deep down about it, there's really no limit to how much you can communicate with two symbols as long as you have unlimited storage. So as long as you have enough spaces on the worksheet, right? Uh, where you can make uh, 50 million squares, right, means something different than 49,999,999 squares. The only limit is how many squares you can actually fit onto the worksheet. So there actually is no limit to what you can communicate with just two symbols, which is crazy. But um, stick with stick with us because this is really literally what the entire computer science uh, division is, is founded on. Okay, so kind of getting into the nitty-gritty here. Um, with only one place value, right, if we only have one slot, there are only two possible things we can communicate, right? There's circle and square. Now, if you add an additional place value, that number, what do you think it goes up to? there are now four possible patterns, right? And all we've done is increase the number of values that we can store, right? So instead of just having one symbol per line, we can have two. So you can have circle, square, or I'm sorry, circle, 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 square, square, circle, square, square. If you add a third place value, how many do you have? We now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight possible patterns, right? So you may notice that every time we add a value here, the number of possible patterns jumps up, is, is doubled, essentially. So we had two patterns, and then four, and now we have eight, right? We can then map these to to fit a number, right? We can make we can make these represent actual physical numbers in the in the world as we know it. So we can use three circles to represent the number zero, circle, circle, square to represent the number one. Okay. Now, here's the question: Instead of two shapes, right? Instead of circle, square, what if we had ten shapes? What would that look like? So. 
if you have one place value and you have 10 different shapes, you would have 10 one shape patterns. Notice how this is just, uh, just like the, the circle square. So what would those 10 one shape patterns be? There they are. Okay. Now think of these as shapes. If you really think about it, that's all these are, right? That's a different shape from that. That's a different shape from that. That's a different shape from that. Really think about, think kind of abstractly about numbers here and realize that they really are just shapes that we have kind of put data into, right? So this shape represents two, the concept of two. Now, if you increase the, if you double the amount of digits that you can have, right, you can have 102 shape patterns. And here they are. Okay, pay careful attention to what's happening here, right? So this looks just like circle, circle, right? This looks just like square, square. So quick quiz, don't overthink this. What comes next? What happens when we get to the end of our two digits? It rolls over, right? Becomes 100. So where is this heading? We're heading towards binary, as you may have guessed. Binary is just a number system that's identical to our 10-digit number system and that they're both they're both number systems, but it's only got two shapes, right? So that's why we've been focusing so heavily on circle square. Circle square is just 0, 1, right? So here's how we count in binary. Instead of shapes, like we've been talking about with circle square, we use zeros and ones. So I want you to think of the circles as zeros and the squares as ones. So circle, circle, circle becomes zero, zero, zero. Circle, circle, square becomes zero, zero, one, and on and on and on until we end with square, square, square being one, one, one. And these can all map onto actual numbers that we use in, uh, in regular life, right? So 0, 0, 0 in binary can represent 0 in uh, uh, the outside world. 0, 0, 1 can represent 1, right? We can represent 0 and 1. It gets tricky with 2 because we don't have the extra placement, so 2 then becomes 0, 1, 0. Okay, um, some of you may have already completed this in class, but if you have not completed it yet, please pause the video uh, here and come back to it after you've completed this activity. So you should have a handout uh, that looks similar to this, uh, and it's got instructions on how to make your own flippy do. The flippy do is a tool that we use to uh, kind of get used to binary. Um, so follow the instructions here. If you've lost the handout, all the directions are right here. So just pause it here and, um, uh, and follow them on here. And then when you're done, come back to the video. So we'll see you when you get back. Okay. So if you've completed your flippy do. Um, you'll notice that there are um, there are eight slots on it. Uh, so let's go over why we, we put eight slots on there and not nine or ten or what have you. So each place value in the flippy do represents one bit, right? So a zero or a one. That's all a bit can be. It's a binary digit. We call it a bit for short. Um, and a bit is the smallest amount of data that can exist, at least in, uh, in computer science. Right, we're talking about the atoms of uh, computer science here. So a bit can be a zero or a one, like a circle or a square. Your flippy do has eight bits, which together make one byte. Right, so remember that eight bits equals one byte. Okay, and that is why your flippy do has eight slots on it.
Okay, so now that we've used our flippy do, uh, let's uh, let's practice with it. So uh, we're going to translate numbers from both decimal to binary and binary to decimal, so that you really you really get a feel for for how to how to translate uh, numbers into uh, uh, both and out of both systems. Uh, and and keep in mind a decimal number. That just means it's a regular number. So that's the way numbers you're used to using numbers in math class and uh, and 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 all over essentially. Okay, so let's focus on the top part first. So represent these decimal numbers in binary. So how do we get the the regular number seven into zeros and ones? Um, so I'm going to walk you through seven, and then I want you to practice twenty. So here's the method for using your flippy do. So keep in mind our number is seven. So you can, my tactic is to, uh, obviously you're going to go to the second row here, okay? And start going down the list. And what you're looking for is the biggest number, or I'm sorry, the smallest number that can contain the number that you're trying to translate. So remember our number is 7. Can 128 contain 7? Yes, it's much bigger than 7. But is, it, is there a smaller number that can contain it? Well, let's move over. Yes, 64 can contain 7 easily. But is it the biggest number? Let's move over again to 32. Can 32 contain 7? Yes. So we keep moving down the list until we get to 8 and 4. Right? Can 8 contain 7? Yes, it can. So then we check 4. Can 4 contain 7? No, 4 is less than 7. So we know to start here. Okay? So anything that you have just left behind, that you've said that you've moved on and found a smaller number that can contain it, uh, you leave those as zeros. You do not flip the ones up. We only flip the ones up to essentially add these numbers to our total. So remember, when you flip the one up, that means you're adding whatever value is here in the second row to your total. Okay. Now, are we going to flip up the one for eight? No, we're not, because that would make it 8, and 8 is too big. We're trying to make 7, right? So we won't flip up 8 here. So then we work our way down to 4. Will we flip 4 up? Yes, we will, okay? Because that's how we start getting towards uh, 7. So 4, we flip up 4. And remember, that makes our current total 4. And then we just keep moving down the line. So what do we have to add to get us to 7 from 4? Well, we need to add 2 first, right? So we'll flip up the 1 here. That makes our total 6. We're still not at 7 yet, so we still need to add something. Well, luckily, we've got our last digit here, which can add the value that we need, which is 1. So 4 plus 2 plus 1 equals 7. So you would flip all of these up. Remember, if you're adding it together, if you're turning on the number here, you are flipping the 1 up. So the binary 4, 7 should be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay? Now that can be confusing. If you, if you got confused by that, I highly encourage you, go back and watch the video. Right? Rewind, rewind the last minute or so and pay very careful attention to that. So at this time, if you will, pause the video. We just did seven together, and I want you to uh, do 20 on your own. So pause the video and come back when you have attempted 20. Okay, hopefully you paused the video there and worked out 20 and came back. So let's work out 20 together here. Okay, so the same method. We would start in our second row. We're looking for the smallest number in this list that can contain 20. Hopefully, you correctly identified 32. 32 can contain 20, but 16 cannot, right? So we would flip up 16 and flip up 4, because 16 and 4 add to 20. We would not flip up anything else, because flipping up anything else would push the value past 20. Okay, so the the binary for 20 should be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. And let's, let's check and see. Yep. Now, 
translating binary values back into the decimal uh, is relatively easy by comparison. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. So what you would do on your flippy do, so let me see if I can, that's four, that's the fourth value and the the seventh value. Okay. Zero zero one zero 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 one zero zero one zero. So you would just flip up the ones here and count those values and nothing else. So zero 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 one. So you would flip this one up, that's sixteen, and then zero zero one zero, that second to last one is two. So you would flip up the sixteen and the two. So whatever you flip the one up, that's what you add. So 16 and 2 should add to 18. Okay, and that is, in fact, what that one is. So take a moment and practice the last one. See what value you come up with. And when you come back, you should have gotten 31. Okay, and again, if you're struggling to figure out why, let me run through that real quick. You only add the one, the you only add the ones that are turned on, right? So all the, the first three are turned off, essentially, so 0, 0, 0. So we don't add these at all. We just add 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1, because those are all turned on. And if you add those digits together, you should get 31. Okay. Hopefully that's a, uh, a, a succinct explanation for how to, how to use your flippy do. Uh, if you're still struggling, please message us on Google Classroom. Okay, don't forget, you should have this handout. We handed this out in class. Um, what this is is more practice using your flippy do, translating decimal numbers into binary and translating binary numbers into decimals, uh, just like we practiced in the previous slide. Um, so make sure you complete that. If you have lost uh, your copy, uh, there should be a digital copy in classroom or on uh, code.org. Um, but yeah, make sure you have this completed by uh, the next time we meet in class. All right, so let's wrap up this lesson. So today we focused on uh, uh, kind of an introduction to binary and the differences between the decimal number system and the binary number system. So the decimal number system is the one that we use frequently. It's what we call a base 10 number because it's got 10 possible digits, right? 10 possible shapes, we called them, 0 through 9. Okay. Um, and a binary number seems more restricted because it's just base 2. So there's only two possible numbers. So instead of 0 through 9, we have 0 and 1. Now, it's important to know the differences between binary and decimal number systems. Okay? Um, uh, use it, if we use our flippy do, we can convert between binary and decimal number systems. While it's easier for humans to use the decimal number system in our everyday lives, right? Now you may be going, why do I have to translate this? into binary, why can't, why can't I just use the same number system that I've used my entire life? You will see later how when we're building electronics, things that run on electricity, binary is more efficient for communication because what this eventually becomes is on and off. And those are really the only commands that an electronic understands, right? There's no, there's not on, off, sort of on, sort of off, sort of on, sort of off, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Um, so, here's your prompt. So write this down in your journal, okay, and have this in your journal by the, the next time you come to class. So, now that we've had a chance to practice, let's find out what we've learned and what we still have questions about. I want you to write down three things that you learned today, okay, in this lesson. Two things that you found interesting, and one question you still have. That last one is very important because you may get stuck working on this at home and you may have questions, but you may forget what those questions are by the time you get to us. So make sure that uh, uh, if you have a question or questions, write them down in your journal. Okay. And just a review of your terms for today. There are only, only a couple outside of binary. Right? So a bit, that's a contraction of the words binary digit. It is the single unit of information, 0 or 1, uh, in, a, in a computer. It is the smallest a piece of information can be inside of a computer system. And then remember that there are 8 bits in a byte. A byte is 8 bits of data. Okay. That's going to wrap it up for our uh, lesson. Um, 
Hope you enjoyed. If you have questions, leave them on Google Classroom. Uh, have a great weekend, and we will see you next time.